Welcome everybody, it's Be Set Free at 3. Good to see you all here today. We're just getting ready as well for a great teaching from Angela. Last week she did Little Faith. Today, Great Faith. Great Faith. Hello everybody, also from my side. Welcome, good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. It's just wonderful being with you today and be set free at three. I really enjoy this time that we spend together, Andrew and I and you. And remember, Sundays is the German version, the English and German, uh, broadcast to Germany and uh, around the world, in fact, uh, in German and English. And we next Sunday we, com we continue with our our teaching of the Great Exchange. It gets exciting this Sunday. We laid a foundation last Sunday. It gets exciting this Sunday. Eh? And uh, be there as well at 3 o'clock. But today, over to Angela. And it's great, not great grace, but great faith. about faith. We are on a preaching series on faith. What is faith? What is biblical faith? What is faith compared to seeing and hoping? What is little faith? And today we look at great faith. Welcome everybody again. So Father, we just thank you for a component, a, 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 a vit, something that you've given us through the cross of Calvary, something which surpasses all reason, something that surpasses all understanding, something that surpasses the natural and puts us right into the supernatural, right into your kingdom, power and glory, and that's faith. Thank you for faith, which is a substance that we have, and we just thank you for it. Bless the preacher today, the, the teacher today. Bless Angela, and bless those listening with ears that are opened and hearts that are available to that which you have to say through her in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, let's start. I'm so excited about this message because once we understand what faith is and we live it, we express it, we talk faith, that is what gives us access to miracles, miracles in our lives, in our situation. This is where the power lies. So faith is actually power and it also has, um, well, let's say a, a symptom how it shows up it shows up in peace. So whenever you have peace about something that looks completely the opposite of what, you know, um, it should be. But you have peace because you know you're actually already walking in faith. And in case there is no peace or not enough peace and worry might um, trouble you, then just listen to his word like today. And I'm sure that faith is going to rise up in you. So as believers, we are called to walk in faith and to live by faith. This is what um, yeah, our lives mm. should look like mm. and also distinguishes us from those who do not believe. Who don't believe, yeah. No. We have, um, we have learned that all things are possible, as we just heard from Sinach. All things are possible to the one who believes. Who believes yeah. And we often take it unto God and saying, well, all things are possible to God, which is right. But us being his children, 
he gave us something the same dna of him we now have so faith is already there in our spirit and we just have to dig it out we just have to discover it and this is what we're doing today that's right by listening to his word yes wow. so the importance of belief is immensely high because it gives you access to miracles and when do you need miracles well when your mind and the circumstances tells us it's hopeless it's hopeless can't be how should it it's over from the natural perspective there's no way this is now where a miracle comes in and this is what we believers believe in that's why we are called believers so the kind of belief to see miracles must be according to the biblical definition of faith not according your own definition so even though it um you know can can even offend you by discovering oh, my faith is actually not faith mm, but mm. don't be offended just be encouraged because now you know it there is a faith that you also have or you can switch on and then when it's the right faith then you're going to get your miracle amen we have experienced it a, a lot of times. many times yes we live in faith so faith is the realization of what one hopes for it is a conviction not a doubting a conviction of things that one does not see faith brings peace as i just said because one knows better than what the circumstances say or show and faith is the evidence of invisible realities wow. so faith goes beyond the senses and the realm of reason Re reason has its place though we don't deny reason especially when uh, superstition you say in english yeah? superstition. superstition and fatality in the late middle ages for example needed to be questioned in order to bring truth to the uneducated people mm. so it's very very important but reason alone does not bring you into the realm of the supernatural that is also yeah. real a realm that is very very real yeah. it's called the kingdom of god mm -hmm. because miracle miracles come from there mm -hmm. and faith as i always say is a say it's a ve vehicle the vehicle yeah. vehicle that Accesses. brings it the from 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 that realm of the supernatural from god's kingdom this is how you bring the, those realities into the natural realm so that's why you are in this world but not of this world you have already access you are already living in the kingdom of god as a believer so it's a spiritual realm that unbelievers don't even believe in or mm. don't because they mm. don't see it mm. but we do mm. and i want to tell you something it was mind blowing for me once i found out that there are so many scientists because of being scientists they don't believe in god and in the supernatural or miracle mm. Mm. but you know what there are even many more scientists many more who believe in god because they are scientists mm. 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 maybe you want to meditate upon what i just said why do scientists because they are scientists that is the reason why they do believe in god all right according to the bible faith is the answer or reaction of the human spirit to god's word once the word is preached once god's word or promises are announced mm. Mm. once the good news come to you mm. that's the moment mm. where now everything depends on your reaction mm. so are you now reacting on god's word with faith or are you saying no can't be and the bible talks about the sower that sows the seed which is god's word and it depends the ground meaning it depends the condition of your heart whether this the seed that has the power to, to develop a harvest to develop miracles in your life if it now grows or if it is quenched mm. so it depends your heart 
Faith does not see with physical eyes. That is so important. But with the eyes of the heart. And that's why Paul prays for the saints. In, for example, in uh, Ephesians 1, we know that he says, uh, I pray that the eyes of, the, of your heart, the very center and core of your being, may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit. So when the word of God comes to you, light comes to you. And whatever is in darkness, whatever is there that, that makes you not to see, all of a sudden you can see. And it's so important because then Paul continues, so that you may know, because it's about knowledge. And so that you may understand, because it's about understanding as well. And then he talks about our calling, our inheritance, and the power of the resurrection. Mm. So, for example, when someone shouts to God in his sickness or disease, Lord, I believe that you can heal me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord, please, please heal me. Or maybe in your debt and not having a job. Oh, Lord, you see my miserable situation. Please, Lord, please give me a new job. According to the biblical understanding, this person does not pray in faith. It might shock you. Well, but it's good that you hear the good news. This, what this person is praying is more a desperate request or Please. even cry. A cry yeah. The person praying assumes that his request may, might not be heard, mm. but hopefully it will. And his prayer is more an expression of his desperate mm. hope mm. or even of his fear. Mm. Okay. And fear is the opposite of faith. Mm. So it's not faith. So in order to bring about faith, the truth of the gospel, which is always good news, let me tell you, it must be good news. This is a translation of gospel. That's right. So the truth of the gospel has to reach the human heart through conscious thought, meaning it has to pass through these, your thought and turn away from the troubles and the circumstances that speak of a complete other language and we looked at mark 11 24 mm -hmm. i think the last two weeks that jesus defines faith as something that we already have mm -hmm. something that we possess mm -hmm. something that is already ours and it it, it is also expressed by your words mm -hmm. or when you speak when you mm -hmm. talk mm -hmm. that is that at the same moment we pray we assume that we have received it yes. and that we are not using the future tense yes. Yes. but the past tense. Yes. Thus, as I said last week, it yes. is always easier to dress our prayer in thanksgiving. Or thanksgiving, yes. Yeah. The most powerful point of faith is thanksgiving. That's right. Yeah. So, yes. Lord, thank you that I have a new job. Mm. Do I have already, you know, the, 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 the mm. call of the company telling mm. me, we take you. No, I don't have it yet. Mm. But this is what I believe mm. I'm convinced about. Lord, thank you for healing me. Thank you for you. You, you have healed me 2,000 years ago. Mm. By your stripes, I was healed. And thank you, Lord, that I am successful because you are my great reward. Thank you, Lord, for I am strong mm. because you are my strength yes. and the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. And thank you, Lord, mm. for I always live in abundance for you are my provider. Yes, yes. And that you set the table before me in the face of my enemies. Yes, yeah. So while they get exhausted, I, he prepared a table mm. before me mm. and I'm sitting here like Robbie now having an Earl Grey tea or a cappuccino and can relax. That's right. So that is actually an expression of faith. Of faith, that's right. A faith cup. A faith <laughs> cup runneth, runneth over. That's why it's so big. <laughs> so, and thank you Lord for your grace and your goodness. Follow me throughout my life. Mm -hmm. This is what I know. Mm -hmm. And I pray this in the middle of 
the storm. Wow. I don't hope that I will. I think I know and I assume that it is so, that it has happened for me, and therefore I talk as such because right. faith speaks. Speaks. That's right. And Eleanor also speaks. She says, "Good day, pastors. Ken Cross. Good day. Hello, Eleanor. Good to see you." Hi, Eleanor. Good to see you. And interestingly, four categories of faith are mentioned in the New Testament. Wow. Small faith, great faith, but also weak faith and strong faith. And they all have a certain expression. You can see by behavior and by words and the attitude of a person if that person is in little faith, great faith, weak faith or strong faith. And the good news again, there is a cure for little faith and there is also a cure for weak faith yeah. and that other one we are going to talk about it next week. Without a vaccination, it's just a cure. <laughs> That's right. Without God's a vaccination. Under control, huh? He's got the cure under control. <laughs> so in this series of sermons on faith, we look at each of these categories to understand what biblical faith is that causes miracles and what it exactly means. And as we uh, saw last week, fear and doubt, which mostly stem from ignorance, are the result of small faith. Mm -hmm. The reason is normally lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, my people perish, and they, they are not supposed to perish, mm -hmm. because we are called to be blessed. Mm -hmm. So, but yet the Bible says, my people, mm -hmm. meaning those who belong to God, perish mm -hmm. for the lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Consequently, by hearing and knowing God's word, mm -hmm. word what happens? Mm -hmm. Faith grows, and you do not perish, but you shall live and tell others about God's goodness. Hallelujah. Let us now turn to great faith. How does this great faith express itself? Well, there is one story in the Bible about a woman who is not even a Jew. Yes. She is from Canaan, a Syrophoenician. Yeah, Syrophoenician. Syrophoenician. Syro, Syrophoenician. Okay, Syrophoenician in yeah. German. By birth. So she's not a Jew and she answered Jesus in Matthew 15 in such a way that Jesus himself said to her, Oh woman, your faith is great. Wow, what a compliment. It will be done to you as you wish. Wow. What a statement. What a statement. So whatever you came here to me for, mm. whatever your request, your prayer was, you shall receive, receive. receive according to what you want. Yes. It shall be given to you given. because of your great faith. With your great faith. Let's go there now. Matthew 15. And a, and a man of great faith as well as my friend Neil Fick, who says, incorruptible, indestructible, unbreakable. Jesus, love you guys. Love you too, brother. And see you in June. We're doing a great whole town revival yeah. in Scottsboro. And there we are host, amongst others, is Neil Fick. Hallelujah. Faith. Looking forward to it, Neil. You see, that's a great demonstration of faith, Neil. Great faith. <laughs> you're, already starting to imp you're already starting to put in place that which is going to happen. Huh? Your faith works. So let me read to you, or rather, do you want to read? Yeah, let me read it. You have always such a nice voice. Reading and, voice. Yeah, reading and radio voice. So we start from verse 21 yes. right to verse 28. And let me give you an advice. Whenever you hear God's word, don't say, Ah, that is the scripture that I know. With this attitude, you make it much more difficult to receive a new revelation. And God's word is always fresh That's right. and always powerful. That's right. So just expect today to get something new yes. of what you know already. That's and right. And open your ears, your mind and your heart while listening. Yeah. I learned something that uh, from uh, Kubas von Rendsburg. And he always used to say he hears the word as if it's the first time he ever hears it. And reads it as if, it, as if it's the first time he ever reads it. 
Yeah. And so, the uh, David, David October, uh, let's do that. Let's, let's see the word as if it's the first time. That's what I've got into habit of doing is hearing and seeing it as if I've never heard it before. And so, good day to you, David. David October, from verse 21. Yes. After leaving there, Jesus withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from the district came out and began to cry out urgently, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is cruelly possessed by a demon. Maybe, maybe, maybe I, I can just stop here because there is a thought that, you know, remember that I just earlier said, if you, if you pray such a prayer, Oh Lord, I know you can heal me. Please heal me. This is what this woman is doing now. She is now crying desperately, asking the Lord to help. Have mercy on me. And that's why we as Christians, we think we should pray like that. Oh, yeah. But you will see now that this will not bring the results that she's hoping for. Let's continue. But he did not say a word in answer to her. You see? So he ignores completely such a prayer. What? And his disciples came and asked him repeatedly, Send her away, because she keeps shouting out after us. And he said, I was commissioned by God and sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to kneel before me, him, saying, Lord, help me. Hi. Stop. And now she's making it even worse. Look at that. Now Jesus first ignored her, which is, it, it must feel very, very bad. It, it, it feels like rejection. I mean, I thought the Lord is good and he is love. How can he ignore the woman? He's actually not ignoring the woman. He's ignoring the doubt and the unbelief. Because she's coming to him, but doubting. You know, there is a faith already in her, otherwise she wouldn't have come. But at the same time, she's crying and pleading and shouting and uh, began to cry urgently and saying, have mercy on me. So she gets ignored. Now she's even kneeling, saying, please, Lord, I need your help. And look at Jesus' answer. It seems as if she made it even worse. And he replied, it's not good or appropriate to take the children's bread and throw it to the pet dogs. <gasps> what? To the dogs? Mm -hmm. So, now it's, it's at this point, I would say, let me just leave. This man, he uh, either he hates me, he ignores me, he doesn't like me, he sends me away. Now he's calling me even a dog. Mm. But he's calling that behavior of hers, you know? That is his response is according to her behavior. Like, you, you know that God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. Don't forget that. And yet here, Jesus now is reacting in a way we normally don't expect. It, it seems to be of, offend, offending, offensive. Yeah. offensive. Now as if he calls her a dog. But the thing is, the way she's approaching Jesus is not the way we should approach him. In doubt, in, in, in crying, in pleading, in kneeling down. This is religious behavior. So now she turns completely. I see her literally getting up. Getting it. And not turning away and leaving. Look at that woman now. Okay. And she said, yes, Lord. But even the pet dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their young master's table. Then Jesus said, answered her, Woman, your faith, your personal trust and confidence in my power is great. It will be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed that very moment. You see, that's why it's so important that we read things in the Bible in their context. So this woman is coming to Jesus and two, three times he actually turns his back on her, ignoring her and now even saying, listen, 
You don't belong to the house of Israel. I have nothing to give to you because the bread is only for the children mm. in the house, for the mm. children of God. Mm. And you, not be even being a Jew, you don't belong to that group. So, well, bye-bye. But this woman now, look at her reaction. Before, in despair, in pleading, mm. in kneeling down, please, Lord, heal my daughter. She's possessed by a demon. Then she gets up. Now confident saying, yes, master, you're right. But she dares to say, but mm -hmm. to a master, the master, to the Lord, mm. she dares to get up and to actually say, but mm -hmm. let's look at her response. Because the reason why at the end, after being ignored first with her prayer, then she finally goes home and has received her miracle. Mm. Wow. Why? Well, great faith. Jesus calls her words now, mm. her attitude mm. now, mm. great faith. Mm. What is great faith? We see it from this woman. Exactly. Neil knows and or realized it or maybe... He knew already it's persisting faith. Persisting faith. Remember the widow that was pleading with a judge and he sends her away and sends her away and sends her away until he said, ah, mm. oh, mm. let me rather mm. deal with this woman mm. so at least she mm. doesn't, she stops bothering me. Mm. So it's clinging, can you say clinging belief? Cling. Yeah. yeah. Holding on. So this kind of faith that mm. does not give up in the mm. face of mm. resistance mm. because it knows mm. and therefore does not allow itself mm. to be mm. rejected mm. if things do not immediately mm. go mm. the way mm. one wants them to. Mm. Mm. And while I was preparing that message, mm. it actually blessed me and has ministered to me mm. this very message that I prepared mm -hmm. because I've been in South Africa now for two years mm. trying to get a visa and I think it, it's now um, including the extension mm. for six months instead of three months. Mm. Um, I mm. applied for it probably six times. Mm -hmm. Every six months, all my documents expire. Every six months, you know, um, everything I have to mm. go again for a police clearance. I have mm. to go again for uh, a x-ray, medical report, translation of my documents. Mm. Because everything is expired now, I have to get fresh documents, fresh stamps, and I got so tired. And I realized, mm -hmm. I actually caught myself that I'm always speaking negative mm -hmm. about that visa because mm -hmm. it has just frustrated me so much mm -hmm. to always get um, rejection, to mm -hmm. always get rejected. Mm -hmm. It's as if now, well, Lord, I was saying, if they don't want me in this country, then I leave. It's my last time. So, and in the beginning, I remember that I said, ah, you know, if the Lord, uh, the, the world belongs to God, yeah. I mean, who are the South Africans to reject me? Who are the South Africans to not give me access into that country where God brought me? But then gradually, 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 I, th I started talking negative. Yeah. Why? Because of the circumstances. Mm. Because I always got a de de denial? Yeah, uh, or, Yeah, every time. I sometimes even went for an appeal and, uh, and, and, and giving them arguments why they can't deny my or de can't reject my application. Yeah. And yet they did. Yeah. So I said, yeah, I, I'm going to leave it now. Mm. And every time I was asked, you know, when guests are coming here, my family, my friends, I was always talking negative. Mm. But you know what? I'm going to change yes. this now. Yes. It's never too late Take to crumbs, change then. your negativity, Take to get crumbs. out of it, exactly, and to to go back there's into... Always a, there's always a crumb in faith. Huh? Hallelujah. It's <laughs> also like sowing seed. There's always a seed to sow. Huh? That's right. So great faith responds to a particular situation because of the better knowledge that it has. And me knowing God's word, I let my circumstances overthrow, 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 overthrow yes, yeah. the truth. 
and 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 not even realizing it. Mm. That's why it is so important that we listen mm. to preachings, mm. that we that we come together with other sisters and brothers who encourage us in our faith, because um, even those circumstances is one way mm. of God talking to us. But there are so many other ways, and if we rely only on the circumstances, mm. Mm. we imi- uh, we can easily become. Mm. Uh, Fat, fatalists? Can you say Fatalist. that? Fatalist. Yeah, well, we, fat- we preached on that the other day. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, it reminded me that yeah. as well. Honey, I just want to ask you, do you think this this could be too serious? This is a great, great... What chunk. time is it now? It's half past. Oh, my word. Yeah. <laughs> I just, could I you just... carry on with this next Tuesday? Yeah, it's okay. so great. I mean, it's a great, great teaching. You agree. And I see over here that... Uh, uh, um, David says, hi, everybody. And then, of course, he says, wow, sister. In other words... Proclaiming the great, great teaching. And of course, Eleanor says, not of course, but Eleanor, of course, says, great teaching. Yeah, yeah. Eleanor is always encouraging. Always oh, encouraging. Eleanor, huh? you're so beautiful. I really, I love yeah. uh, reading your comments. Yeah. They really, really uplift me. Yeah, and interesting, uh, um, gates will open for you, Eleanor. Gates that you don't expect, doors that you don't expect. Amen. At this time, you'll see, they'll, the Lord will open them for you. And Neil Fick once says, standing fast, holding on what? You believe. Exactly. So let me just finish then this and then I make a break here. That's it. And the the rest is then for next time. Yeah. So, okay, let's go back now to the great faith that we see in this particular situation of this um, Canaan woman. So, the woman does not allow herself to be put off in the face of rejection or or resistance. And that is what I want you to take with you mm. today yeah. have you been rejected mm. maybe by men mm. by people yes. maybe maybe you have written already many applications to get a new job and you got rejected now you even you you fear to to uh, submit your next application because yes. it feels so bad yes. if you open then the letter again yes. that says yes. no sorry but yes. uh, we yes. we um, chose someone else yes i tell you today don't give up. Yes. Maybe in the face of your sickness yes. or disease, it's not even your sickness. Yes. I shouldn't say that. The symptoms of sickness that's in your right. body, that's which right. are not yours, that's but right. that show something yeah. that speaks a language. Yeah. Now you're going to talk yeah. back yeah. to your body. There's, your body needs to hear the yeah, truth. There's no such thing as my cancer, my arthritis. No. You didn't create it. It's not yours. It, it, it's not even given to you, yeah. right? So don't take it. Huh? And it seems now as if we are pedantic, but it's, it's, it starts with these small things, how we use our language and what we speak. Remember that faith speaks. And maybe in the beginning you speak and you don't really believe what you say, mm. but it, it's going to change. Mm. It's going to change. Just be patient and mm. don't stop talking what you believe. Mm. I'm going to change now because it's not too late. That's right. So, on the other hand, but, you know, um, if, we, if I compare myself with this Kana and woman, we often give, give up quickly in the face of resistance and then believe, as I just mm. said, in a fatalistic way. Mm. Ah, then it shouldn't be. It's not meant to be so. It's supposed not to be. Or even thinking in our subconsciousness, I am not worth it. Yeah, I'm not worth it, yeah. But you are worth it because mm. Jesus even died for you. Mm. Here you can see your worth. Mm. So, and if God is for you, mm. why do you think yeah. he should be in anything yeah. against you? Yeah. He's surely not. Yeah. Jesus first makes it clear that what the Canaanite woman, Ka- Canaanite woman, Canaanite, Canaanite woman yeah. asked for was not intended for her being a foreigner. Jesus was actually only sent to the Israelites at this point in mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. So do not our circumstances often speak that language too. Mm-hmm. But instead of giving up and feeling inferior, mm-hmm. she persists. She knew Yeah, she knew that this Jesus was her help, that the answer to her problem, the answer to the problem that her daughter was suffering mm-hmm. uh, was Jesus because she yeah. heard about him and mm-hmm. she was convinced. Mm-hmm. And she was not prepared to tur- be turned away with mm. her urgent concern. Mm. So if you have an urgent concern, mm. don't, don't um, give up. This is what you have to get from this message today. Don't give up. 
She wanted to get help from Jesus and his reaction to ignoring her first and then his response branding her as an outsider or dog mm -hmm. was basically a slap in the face. Yeah. She was not Jewish. She did not belong to God's people and the bread that is healing for her daughter, which she desired, was intended for the children of God. And here, the good news again, what we can also learn from it. If bread is the healing and this bread is for the children of God, mm. remember what John 1, 12 says, mm. that if those who received him, mm. to them he gave the power to become children of God. Mm. So if you are a child of God already, mm -hmm. healing is your portion. Mm -hmm. It is your bread anyway. Amen. And if you're not a child of God yet, there's also a solution for that. You must just receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And that's how you become part of the family. Isn't that beautiful? Let's look again at the woman's great faith after Jesus tells her that the bread is not for the dogs. In verse 27, um, that was here. Yes, Lord. She, she, said, she said, yes, Lord, but even the pet dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the young master's table. First, she, she confirms saying, yes, Lord, you are right. So meaning she shows respect. And then she dares to offer against the master with a butt saying, and yet, have you ever talked to God like that? I asked you today. You can dare to talk to your Lord, to your dad like that. Yet the, dog, the, the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. So whenever you find yourself in a difficult situation, you can actually plead with God by saying, you know what, dad, is it not what you say in your word? Mm. I want to encourage you to do so. The answers. She answers Jesus with her knowledge. So answer Jesus with your knowledge. Your knowledge about God's word. Her words are words of faith that persistently awaits receiving something. And this kind of faith is based on information. She had heard of Jesus and knew he could help her. She did not give up and her faith made the impossible possible. possible. What? Her not belonging to that family, to the children of God, all of a sudden she had access to the same bread that belonged to the children. Mm -hmm. So, and this was then the cure for the healing of her daughter. And one can say that she did not receive the healing yeah. but she took it she literally took it and you know what sometimes I do a research looking at the Hebrew or Greek word of a translated word in our language in English or German or whatever and you know that the the word receive like for example out of his abundance we have received grace yeah. upon grace remember in John chapter 1 so in that word received the, the Greek word is lambano, and lambano can literally be translated with take it, grab mm. it. T yeah. So meaning oh. out of his abundance, we have taken, we take, we take grace upon grace. Mm. So this is what that woman did. She lambanoed Great grace. her healing. Great faith. Great she faith. reached out for it. Mm. She took it, knowing that she literally had it standing in front of her why should she leave why should you give up mm. this is what i'm telling you today let me give you a homework for next time and i hope it will minister to you in this very context because this is the next scripture i would have given to you and it is found in luke 7 the verses 1 to 10 and see what you can take out of that scripture after what you have heard today Luke 7, 1 to 10 is your homework. See you next week, Wednesday, and of course also on Sunday on Be Set Free at 3. And remember, in German, 
uh, in German uh, time or Germany, it will be an hour earlier, meaning it's then two o'clock. Two o'clock. Wow. What it? Yeah, Eleanor says, wow, what a revelation. Neil Fix says, wow, again. Robbie, your wife is a great teacher. She is a great teacher. Thank you, Neil. She Thank you, Eleanor. She teaches me every day. <laughs> <laughs> and David October says, wow, teacher. She took it. She took it. She lambano it. She so lambano your miracle today. Lambano your miracle. Speak mm. and remember to thank God in oh. past tense, in other words, meaning a, having re having received it. Her faith was so powerful. She didn't even. She didn't. What Jesus said didn't even stop her. Yeah. And mm. I proclaim today. I speak in faith today. It just turned around in me when I was preparing this message. I have my visa. Thank the Lord with me. Thank for, you, Father. For I have received my visa to stay in South Amen. Africa. Amen. That's right. And of course, we see all these uh, beautiful hearts and thumbs up coming from uh, yeah. from the viewers. Thank you. It's always encouraging. You know, we don't. We are saying something, and this is the interaction. The interaction is the script that you write, the interact, the comments that you give, and the hearts. They haven't stopped the whole program, which is absolutely magnificent. It's also the response to God's word. It's response that to the God's human word. spirit. Yes. is a response to God's word. It's wonderful. And then, of course, on Sunday we do the, the, the second part, the second part of the, the series, The Great Exchange. And it was very technical last Sunday. And it'll be a little technical this Sunday, but halfway through uh, there will be a great, great uh, breakthrough, a great revelation for great that revelation. as well. Great revelation, yes. And blessings to you, Marion. And Brian, my friend Brian, Pastor Brian, awesome revelations to respond with the word exactly Amen. Brian yes to Amen. the circumstances because the circumstances speak a language but instead of talking the same language as your circumstances that would be a worldly language mm. to worldly circumstances mm. and that's why they interact with each other mm. but we instead we speak the heavenly language that's right. God's word and then the circumstances have to respond to it because every knee will bow. Wow. Remember. Incredible. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And the word also says, every weapon formed against you shall not prosper. Your your what? Your your tongue will condemn it. Yeah. In other words, her situation she was in, she didn't accept it. She condemned what she heard and came back for the for the miracle. Came back for that which she believed. Okay, so what a wonderful time we've had. His goodness, His mercy, His grace, His peace, His kingdom, His power, His glory is yours. You are free, you are free. Not by that which you could do, but everything that He has done for you. And David October says, take your visa. Yeah. And it's taken. And there's a, the submission of my application, all the documents, I just got them together now, finally. Spend a lot of money again. But you know what? I will get that money back anyhow. You'll this is what I believe. That's so right. tomorrow I meet the immigration consultant. And then in January I'm going to submit it. So, But I speak in faith. I have right. now some weeks to, right, yeah. to turn everything around. Oh, that's wonderful. It's yours and it's done. And then of course uh, from us. His kingdom. His goodness. His peace. His blood is yours huh? go and flow go and flow in jesus name and in faith yes in faith <laughs> bye bye